Hello and welcome to this episode of Below the Surface. I'm your host, Darshna Kamani, and we have a fantastic show in store for you today. But before we get going, please don't forget you can ask questions or share comments in the comment section below. So let's get going. For today, I would like to introduce you to my co-host, Nicole. Welcome to the show, Nicole. Hello, Darshna. Thank you very much. I'm Nicole Napletonia, and I run Global Alliances for Barracuda. We've actually got a couple of really exciting guests today, and I'd love to give both of them an opportunity to introduce themselves. Rashmi, would you like to start? Um, I'm Rashmi Antipali. I run Azure Watch Virtual WAN in Azure Networking, also Azure Network Virtual Appliances. Uh, so it's super cool to be here today. Thank you. How about you, Tim? Can you do an intro for us? Sure. Hi, everybody. Good morning. I'm Tim Jefferson with Barracuda. I'm responsible for product development and engineering for Barracuda. Uh, we have a portfolio offering called DNA, which is a cool sounding acronym, but it stands for our data protection network and application security portfolio. So we have a on the data side, we have a a cloud-to-cloud -cloud backup solution that backs up Microsoft Office 365. That's hosted on uh, Azure. Uh, for application, we have a, a global WAF as a service, an advanced bot protection service that also is hosted on Azure. And, and today, we're going to be talking about our uh, cloud gen firewall. Yes. Very exciting. Um, and as Tim mentioned, we're going to be talking about um, networking. And so to kick things off, Rashmi, uh, Microsoft has many, many global events, but two of the largest are Inspire and Ignite. At Inspire, a few weeks ago, you guys had a really exciting announcement. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about what you launched at that event. This is a great question. You know, we always get excited talking about all our announcements, but this July has been phenomenal. Um, we've had a ton of those, um, but let me uh, just uh, quickly walk you through things. Uh, but first, let me uh, show you a slide. Yes, thank you. Um, so this is a cool slide that we show, basically talking about the breadth of Azure and pretty much Azure's everywhere. You know, you you're there. Uh, you can find Azure in almost every part of the planet. So it's in 61 regions, in uh, 170 pops. And the reason why I want to start with this is because this kind of gives you the gamut or the breadth of where Azure is. And Azure Virtual WAN basically unifies networking, security, and routing built on top of this global network. So this July, we announced a lot of features and some of the cool ones next to it were um, the capabilities to stitch all this together. So we had uh, hub to hub connectivity, we had the entire transit connectivity, and if up to the next slide. Thank you. So um, what we had this July was a gamut of features around transit connectivity. So we had the hub to hub that GA, we had transit connectivity between any kind of end users, uh, branches, private connectivity, all coming together. We also had features around custom routing. So you can basically customize the traffic flows of routing around uh, different workspaces in the globe, around uh, virtual WAN, on-prem, as well as um, in the VNet space. Uh, we also had a cool capability of uh, security through our firewall management scenarios. And um, it, it's very nice to see that because it kind of stitches the entire connectivity and the security space together where you can do different kinds of flows. And last but not the least, the biggest bang was this announcement, which was the integrated network virtual appliance. And uh, super cool to see Barracuda as the first partner that we partnered with, uh, bringing together the SAFI solution where SD-WAN and security comes in the single field. Super helpful. Thank you very much. I think the thing um, that uh, I am wondering most about is what problem for customers does does all of that help solve you've you've given us a, a lot of information there Rashmi about um, you know the global network stitching it together transit gateway all of those things but what at the root is sort of the the problem that Microsoft is working to to really help customers with 
Well, that's a great question. You know, there's just um, many things in it. Um, but if you really take a step back, um, let me t tell you about the journey we, we actually had. So a few years ago, we were looking at just the landscape of connectivity, um, security, routing, and, you know, all of the things that make a big plan. And one of the things that we actually heard from our customers and user base was make it easy and make it easy in such a way that you are not focused on the nuts and bolts, but rather on the big picture and running the business. And as we started to look at the solutions, one of the cases that stood out very specifically was in the SD WAN space. But there were many providers out there, but they all had their proprietary information and it was important to keep them in place. And SD WAN, as you know, uh, basically simplifies a lot of things. But it's a unified framework of connectivity and the multiple other functionalities. But at the core of it, there is the path selection where you can uh, steer traffic differently and take different paths at the branches and be able to provide application-based routing, uh, which is, uh, depending on the application, you steer the traffic S links from the distributed spaces out there. So when we started to look at it, what we realized was the symmetricity where one end talk to the other, that was required to be kept in time. And as virtual van grew, what we realized was the SD-WAN space of all these uh, solutions required them to be integrated with the first party service. So one of the customer problems that we wanted to solve was how do we bring this in a simple way where there's an integrated SD-WAN security problem. And all of these uh, different nuts and bolts of networking. When you start adding all these up, it becomes a lot, a lot of information. So when you're putting a big WAN together, it just gets very complicated. So the, at the crux of it was ease of use, ease of setting up a network, ease of bringing SD WAN security routing all in a single frame of uh, glass, and that's how this whole thing. Got it. Yeah, that's that's great. Um, makes a lot of sense. Uh, so one of the things that Barracuda has done is worked very closely with with Microsoft to try to try to solve some of those those issues that you mentioned. Um, I think uh, what we'd also love to better understand is is where ISVs fit, but in particular the Barracuda solution, which was part of the announcement at Inspire. Yes. 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 Um, that's a great question. So Barracuda is the first partner that uh, we have integrated as a network virtual appliance solution in the system. Uh, and when I say integrated, what does that mean? It basically brings the best of first party and third party together. Uh, and what that means is, um, you know, when you get solutions in the cloud, there is a beauty about it. Like you get a lot of the things that you don't have to think about. Like you don't have to think about resiliency. You don't have to think about... Um, you know, uh, managing it yourself. You don't have to think about uh, different kinds of traffic flows. So all of that integration basically brought it together. Um, with Barracuda, the proprietary TINA protocol that basically is the heart of SD-WAN systems. And uh, you can provide path selection, you can provide all the cool features of SD-WAN for application-based routing, you can do micro-segmentation, you can basically uh, bring different kinds of SD-WAN workflows at the branch centrally at the so all of this was only possible uh, to kind of bring in in a single frame of system with this whole um, whole aspect of the solution when we integrate. So now what you can do is you don't have to worry. The user doesn't have to worry about managing the resiliency, managing the routing. They can simply go and um, provision a Barracuda from the Azure marketplace. That's no different than what their experience is. But once you provision it, you don't have to think about what do I do about each? What do I do about failover? What, what do we do about plumbing all the routes in Venus, plumbing all the routes in a spoke or a hub? You know, all of that is just built in. You simply just put the Barracuda solution in a virtual WAN hub. And there's a hub and spoke topology where the hub is a Venus. And as soon as you do that, it just comes with all these cool capabilities, which kind of brings all of these together in a beautiful way. So I believe that this is uh, the first time um, Barracuda's capability, core capability, stay intact, but at the same time, it also brings all the cloud goodness along with it. So it's a wonderful solution for our users to work 
Awesome. Yeah, that that helps a lot as well. Thank you, Rashmi. Um, Tim, so for you, why was it important to to integrate? And, and obviously this, um, I'm guessing, uh, a lot of time and energy spent working with the Microsoft engineering teams, product teams, etc. Um, what what is some of your take on on the solution itself and, and the integration and its significance? Yeah, I mean, this was just such a great opportunity. I think when we saw that Microsoft launched VWAN, we saw a, a big change where the cloud traditionally was a place or had quickly become a place for deploying you know, applications and compute and storage, but now cloud is becoming the network. And VWAN became this amazing construct um, to allow us to offer um, and now customers not only to leverage uh, Microsoft's global transit network, but now we could say, uh, to Rashmi's point, that Barracuda thought our core competency is delivering a secure SD-WAN service. We've, we've had a, a very mature secure SD-WAN product for over 10 years, and we thought, hey, if we can jointly develop this with Microsoft, and I think what was unique about Microsoft's approach here, instead of just providing uh, a connectivity integration, um, which would create some of the challenges that Rashmi had mentioned, that the customer would then have to manage the account subscriptions, the deployment, the networking, the scalability, which adds friction. They opened the door to do a unique level, you know, first party like integration where we could jointly develop, you know, and we did this over a year, um, a natively integrated construct that allow uh, ISV partners like Barracuda to bring unique value. And, and what we wanted to bring was a secure SD-WAN capability to Azure VWAN. And this leverage is what Microsoft's so good at. They arguably have the world's largest, most performant network. As Rashmi mentioned, you know, 61 regions, um, over 170 POPs. And, and this is really the core value proposition around um, what SASE and these types of value pro propositions bring, that you can leverage a global footprint, this global transit network, um, and then allow customers the flexibility to deploy and manage their own infrastructure. So we're really excited about the opportunity and the collaboration we had with Microsoft to build this, this global secure SD-WAN service through the VWAN product. A little more on the product and thinking about sort of two things. Is there um, anything that's really different about Barracuda other than the integration? I think you know that makes a lot of sense, but is there something that's different about the Barracuda technology? and? Have third parties either endorsed or sort of picked up on, uh, you know, what what is being uh, jointly added here? So I think the what we wanted to bring is we had very mature uh, SD WAN technology. You know, as, as Rashmi mentioned, we we have a a protocol that's evolved, you know, over a decade around highly distributed uh, requirements around resilience and availability. Um, and you required that symmetry she, she spoke about earlier that allows us to have a multi-transport capability to, to have a unique and active way of measuring not only active and, and passive uh, performance requirements within those connections, but you know, being able to, to spin up you know, lots of transport, a multi-transport system to give customers that resiliency. Um, and being able to integrate that into VWAN allows the customers now to deploy their hubs or pops wherever they want and provide a very rich, mature SD-WAN service. So the, the next thing that we wanted to bring that was unique was around the, the ease of use. Um, and you know, in our, the strength is really around allowing customers just to get started, whether you're just a handful of locations, 5, 10, 20 locations, up to you know, 1,000 or 5,000 or 10,000 locations. You can quickly and easily um, deploy the solution and we built a zero touch service that allows um, at the branch office um, appliances or VMs to be shipped and all they need is power and connectivity and they self register into an orchestration service um, that quickly and easily allows the administrator to, to push policy out to all these locations. So bringing a quick ease of use with very mature SD-WAN technology. And the last piece we wanted to cover was the security piece. Of course, we have a, a a well-established NG firewall that has typical NG firewall capabilities around ACLs, um, DPI, malware, URL filtering, you know, a secure web gateway capability is integrating that security capability uh, into the service. And this allows customers from the branch office now to support a whole bunch of unique use cases, you know, 
um, site to site use cases where they can do unique segmentation saying, hey, site A is only allowed to talk to uh, site B or site A is talking to site A port one is able, able to talk to uh, site B uh, port B. Um, you know, site to cloud where site one can only talk to application A or B. So you can kind of build really fine grained policies. And then, and the next piece we're looking at doing in, uh, in the second half of this year is around um, VNet to VNet segmentation and policy enforcement. So lots to come. Awesome and very helpful. Um, so uh, sounds like a, a lot of pieces are coming together and the whole goal was to make it easy and um, you know, really drive that from a technology perspective. Did you guys think about anything on the commercial side to also make that uh, kind of consumable or easy for, for customers? Yeah, I think, um, you know, that one of the best part about this is just the collaboration between the two teams. So working with uh, Rushmi and the engineering team, uh, thinking through the entire offering, not only from the technology on, you know, for the first time, you know, Microsoft, again, created this unique opportunity for, for partners like us to do this native integration. So we thought through the, the best way to instrument this technology in a way that's very easy for customers, but also thinking through the commercials to make sure it's very um, affordable and competitive in the marketplace and to reduce as much friction in the, in the, in the transaction process. So as Reshmi mentioned, the, the cool thing about this is the native integration in the Azure console that you can quickly, through the VUI console, just go um, select the, the SD-WAN offering and it kicks you right into a marketplace offering and, and customers off and run. Awesome. And maybe to both of you, one thing that I'm hearing a lot about is sassy and not, not sassy like my teenage daughter. Uh, <laughs> sassy is Secure Access Service Edge. So S-A-S-E. <laughs> -S um, uh, can you talk a little bit about that? I, I think that's an acronym that we're hearing a lot about, but I, I, and I have some context, but I'm not exactly sure how it fits here. Yeah. Um, so a very simple way of um, thinking about sassy and love the joke, <laughs> is uh, basically it unifies SD-WAN security and all the network knobs that are distributed. So you get to keep what is distributed distributed, and you also get to central. So SASE is kind of that unified framework that brings together SD-WAN, the beauties of SD-WAN, security, and network as a service. So uh, virtual line kind of fit in right there because that's exactly what it is. The vision statement is it's a unified framework for SD-WAN security and routing. Um, so a lot of our customers are going to start hearing about safety a lot more moving forward. Because, uh, you know, when you start connecting in, when you start securing, when you start routing, when you start accessing your app and uh, look at your distributed user base, you start thinking about all these pieces together, and this uh, SASE is only going to be stronger. Kim, do you want to add? Yeah, I think, you know, um, SASE at this point is still a, a concept that's evolving, and, um, you know, and marrying this, this opportunity that, that um, cloud-based offerings provide customers. And it was interesting, you know, Gartner even mentioned that you know, looking at all the SASE vendors that the IaaS players had not established themselves as a, as a viable offering. And I think with Microsoft offering the VWAN and this native integration changes that. So now it gives customers an opportunity to leverage, you know, the, one of the big tenants of SASE is having a, a cloud-based deployment and be able to have pops uh, that are easily uh, and performant around the services you want to offer that are nearby. And Microsoft having, you know, this a uh, global transit network with, you know, 170 POPs gives the kind of availability that's unprecedented. In, in, and again, arguably the world's most performant network. Um, so it's a great opportunity for, uh, for partners like us to, to integrate with that. And then the other, the other thing I want to mention on, on SASE is this evolution of security requirements mixed with um, the deployment model. Because SASE is really about the deployment model and the evolution right. of how you want to instrument your security controls. And um, I think the thing that's unique about what we're trying to do is, you know, one of the more modern security principles that's evolving, especially with cloud, is the ability as the perimeter goes away, you want to push your security controls as far out to the edge as possible. And um, 
the, the integration with the Azure VUN allows us to dis, to embrace this evolving best practice principle where you can do policy enforcement in the cloud, but you can also push policy enforcement out to the edge. And the edge starts to get redefined as not only the branch and the user sitting behind the branch, so you can do policy enforcement and do local breakout from the branch to, to the right uh, SaaS applications and apply policy at the edge, but also could be to the user. So one of the constructs of SASE is around offering a, a, a more modern mechanism for doing uh, policy enforcement for remote users. And then finally, um, thinking about things. So it's not only about buildings, people, and things. So as the, the OT and industrial ethernet and, and, and OT use cases expand that you'd also want to secure the, those connections as well. It's the same type of technology. So um, it's, it's, you know, it's an interesting, quickly evolving space, Sassy, and, um, and, and we're excited to play, be playing in it. Yeah, it sounds like that helps with a lot of the sort of legacy issues folks have had, but also it seems like you're talking a little bit about futures as we talk about um, things and, and that type of security. Um, Reshmi, to you, what do you think the challenges will be sort of in the future that customers will need um, to address? I think um, when uh, COVID hit the world, we all kind of overnight realized the explosion of user base uh, where they went from one dimension, which was in working in offices, working in smaller offices or bigger offices to just being remote. So I think the biggest challenge that customers are going to see as as we evolve um, into the next generation of how we do our network is uh, the explosion of users. And it's just going to get uh, the elements of a network is just going to get more diverse. We're going to have a mix and match. We're going to have different kinds of networks. You're going to be a user that will want uh, thousands and millions of users with petabytes of data or more. Um, so it's all going to be about scale, performance. And then when you bring all these complicated pieces together, you, you are going to start asking about, I don't want to learn about how to do this and how to do that because it just adds up. So it is going to be even more important to keep it easy. You know, like they say, it's very um, hard to make things uh, simple, but it's very easy to make things complicated. So I think with uh, one of the biggest challenges, the top three challenges that users and customers are going to see with just how the network is evolving with the explosion of users is the user base is the uh, technology diversity, and is also how the functionality is going to grow. So how do you bring all this together and just focus on the problem as opposed to learning all the bits of, of the issue? Tim, do you want to add something? Yeah, I think that that's good. Sorry. Cool. Wonderful. I asked uh, a lot of questions. Is there anything that either of you would like to add that we maybe haven't covered? It was funny. We almost got all the way through this without saying COVID, which is amazing. <laughs> so many of these sessions have started with COVID. So um, I think that is a good landing spot but um, and, and puts it in context for the future and what we'll need to do. But would either of you like a chance to, to wrap up? Yeah, I'll say, um, you know, I think it's been so great working with Microsoft, and I think this unique approach they took to their partner ecosystem and, and looking at ISVs like us and thinking through what unique value we can bring customers and, and thinking through how to do a native integration where Microsoft customers can benefit with what Microsoft does so well, which is managing global infrastructure at scale and, and building highly performant and available networks. And looking at their partner community and thinking through what do we bring unique that brings customer value. Um, so being able to kind of build from scratch and architect this in together and kind of thinking through we, we, we can bring the most value uh, to customers has been has been awesome. And, and, and to Rashmi's point, you know, as um, more mobile users start working from home as part of the pandemic, you know, it it also increases the need to think through um, mm -hmm. how to leverage cloud and as more and more users are accessing SaaS applications and more and more applications are moving into the, the data centers moving into Azure that uh, you have a central policy by which you can manage you know users um, 
and, and remote offices, you know, as they get more federated in this environment and building strong, super easy to, to, to maintain policy, right? And security policy has been difficult to, to rush these points. So I think this, this opportunity to, to work and collaborate together to, to solve this customer problem by building a, a very easy to use, very scalable solution is, has been awesome. And I, I, can't, I can't wait, you know, the first announcement uh, uh, came out and, and we got many more to come. So I want to thank Microsoft and Rushme for their support. Absolutely. I mean, it's been a pleasure working with Garaku. I mean, you have been an amazing team to work with. I mean, we've done so much together to bring this simplified solution of SD WAN and security together. I mean, it's been an amazing journey. So thank you. Yeah, there's a lot to celebrate here, I think, for, for, the, for the problem we're solving. Um, when I think about the six years that I've been at Barracuda working with Microsoft, we've done lots and lots of work with different product teams. And so this really is an example of um, us both driving the Better Together um, story in a very meaningful way. And so uh, thank you very much, uh, both of you, for your time. This has been great. I'm going to turn back to Darsta. Thank you, Nicole. Appreciate it. And a really insightful show and appreciate Rashmi and Tim's time to giving an insight into how Barracuda and Microsoft have been working together. Don't forget to follow Barracuda on LinkedIn to see our previous shows as well as to find out what's coming next. I guess that leaves us to say until next time, have a safe journey.